All right, so let's go ahead and move into Eclipse. Uh, let's get our hands dirty. So in this one, we're actually going to write some code for updating objects uh, using Hibernate. So I'm really excited about this part of it. So again, we're going to use our little copy paste approach again. We're going to select that file, read student demo.java. We're going to right click on that file and choose copy. All right, so we've had, we have it copied and we'll do a right click and we'll choose paste. And for the name, we'll change the name here. We'll call it update student demo and uh, we'll take off the two at the end. So it should be update student demo. And once you're happy with the name, go ahead and click on the okay button. All right. So there's a new, there's a new file here called update student demo. Looks good. All right, so let's go ahead and move into this update student demo. I like to start with this, uh, a lot of the bootstrap code. Let's go ahead and clean up some things. So let's uh, delete those first couple of lines there. I'll also delete that next section. And now here I'll do an int. I'll say student ID equals one. I'm actually going to delete this little piece of code here. Student ID. I'll actually delete those two lines. All right. So here we go. Int student ID session factory get current session session begin transaction. So on line 30, I'm going to just put in student ID and I'll do a similar thing here on line 32. All right, so I took out a lot of code here. Let me just kind of highlight this and just checkpoint where we're at. Um, so student ID, begin transaction, this is our print line, and then um, student, my student equals session.get and student.class, comma, student ID. So effectively, we simply want to retrieve a student object uh, based on that student ID of one. All right, here I just want to do a little system out print line saying updating student. And now I simply want to change the student's name. So uh, change their first name to Scooby, just like we had in the uh, slides. And we have that piece in place, uh, setting the first name. So we're actually updating the object. At this point, it's only updated in memory. And then once we actually do the um, uh, commit, down here at the bottom, the commit transaction, then it's actually updated in the database. Uh, so again, there's no need to explicitly say save or update. You simply commit the transaction and it'll basically update it for you uh, because it was a persistent object that we retrieved from the database in line 32. So that's the basic development process there for doing an update. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, run this application. So again, just right click, choose run as, and choose Java application. And in our console window, we should see some information here at the bottom. Uh, that's where we get the student, we update the student, and then we say done. So that looks really good. So they updated the student. But again, I'm always a little cautious here, skeptical. And I always like to swing over to my uh, MySQL workbench and just verify. <laughs> so let's look at that MySQL workbench, um, the student table, do select rows. And this is for um, the primary key of one, uh, the student ID of one. So there it is. And okay, great. This looks good. Scooby is the first name. So boom, we're successful. So the first name was actually updated to Scooby um, as desired in our application code. So I'm, I'm happy with this. I, I have a, level of confidence that uh, the code actually worked. Yay. All right, so let's go ahead and swing out. I want to do one more query uh, with you in our application. Uh, that's where we're going to do like the bulk update where we're, we're going to set all the student IDs uh, to a given value. So let me just kind of move down a tad bit here, give myself some room to work with.
So let me go ahead and get a new session on line 42. So uh, get get the current session and I start a new transaction. So I say session.begin transaction. And I'll just copy this commit transaction. So I'm basically copied lines 37 and 38 and I pasted them down on lines 46 and 47. So right now I should have a shell, right? Begin transaction, some empty stuff, and then commit. And I'm going to add my work right here in the empty space. And so again, my style, right? I always write a little comment for us. Update email for all students. And I'll do a little sys out print line. And I'll say, um, you know, updating email for all students to something or whatever. All right, so then actually uh, perform the update. We say um, session dot create query. And then we write our little update statement. So I'm going to update student set email equals foo at gmail dot com. Put in my double quotes here. And then I do a dot. I'll just drop it down on a separate line dot execute update. So I'll actually perform uh, the update. So that's it really session create query update student set email to foo at gmail.com execute update. So that'll perform uh, the bulk update in the database for all uh, students. All right, so let's go ahead and save this file and let's run it. Right click and run as. And we can uh, double click our console here to see the output. And here is a hibernate um, update student. So that looks good. But again, let's uh, swing over to that MySQL workbench and verify that this is actually working. So back in the MySQL workbench, I'll just hit the little yellow lightning bolt here to refresh the screen. And voila, email. Everyone's email has been updated to foo at gmail.com. Really good. So we did the bulk update of all students. Um, again, like I mentioned earlier, you can always set like a where clause to update only a specific student or update a range of students with a where clause. But anyways, uh, you kind of get the idea here of doing a bulk update uh, using the Hibernate query language. So I would say congratulations on a job well done.